morning and welcome to Tinkering with Edkelar. This is part 2 of a repair and restoration video on an HP 410C VTVM. If you haven't seen part 1 yet, be sure to check it out first. Curious Mark got two of these, but one was so damaged that he decided to put it aside for later or for someone who would be crazy enough to spend the required amount of time on it. This is where I came into the picture. Thanks again for the opportunity. A quick recap. The power transformer had both primary windings and at least one secondary shot, a resistor was broken in two and the whole thing was quite dirty. Mark did quite a bit of cleaning on his side already, so I had to only brush up the parts that were inaccessible when assembled. Cleaning the case and replacing the filter caps was simple enough. But the transformer took an extra round this time. Somehow I managed to short out the winding against the shielding layer. But overall, the power supply was working when I finished part 1. A comment on the first part mentioned that maybe a rectifier diode was broken and caused the transformer to burn out. And indeed, one of the old ones is just a dead short. This might be the root cause of the problems. And now, the conclusion. The meter movement seemed in good condition, but the glass was a bit foggy on the inside. Clearly, something got in there and coated it. Smoke, maybe? I opened up the case and gave the glass a good scrub. The meter itself looks pristine, so no need to go any deeper here. Also, this scale is printed on and since there is no visible discoloration, I leave that one alone too. After closing it up again and making sure that the peg for the zero adjustment is properly meshing with the mechanism, I am glad that I did that step. Looks much better already. The little cover plate above the meter was scratched up from removed stickers. I have a spray can with a color that is close, so I'll just give it a quick sand to even out the surface and a nice coat of fresh paint. I'll use this opportunity to also show how I check the potentiometers. As you can see, I use an analog meter for that. Why you ask? Other than nostalgia, there is a deeper reason behind that. You see, potentiometers, or rheostats, work by sliding a pickup contact across a resistor surface. There are various ways to construct all of these components, but that basic concept is universally the same. Over time, a layer of dirt or oxide forms on the material and gets trapped between the wiper and resistor. That layer is anything but even though, and so the wiper will lose contact when particles are trapped under it. This is why old radios crackle when you adjust the volume. Digital meters usually measure the resistance only in discrete intervals and sometimes even average out the result. But even if they are fast, it's hard to actually see spikes if they are shown as numbers. 
With the analog meter, any crackle will show up as a wobble in the needle. Not absolutely perfect, but much better to catch these issues than anything digital I've seen so far. Now for the missing wires. I looked all over the place to find good replacements for the shielded DC and ohms wires and given the high input impedance I think that shielding isn't optional. The best ones I could find were sold as speaker wires and are rated for 300 volts. This might be a problem if I need to max out the meter at 1500 volts but I'll cross that bridge when I get there. At least the wire is flexible, the core is a decent size and has low resistance. Both the ground and ohms wire need a clip. I used the ones that I have in my stash. I might eventually replace them with slightly higher quality ones, but they should work fine for now. I like that they are smaller, allows easier access to tight spaces. And now to the PCBs. The first one is the amplifier board. I intend to replace the electrolytics just because and check up on all the other components. Note that the two input capacitors on the PCB are metal cans with screw terminals. One of them had a nasty case of mold under an insulation sleeve. Mark scrubbed that off and packed it in a layer of Kapton tape. Let's see if I can improve on that. After desoldering them, I removed the tape and put the wire brush to good use. That, combined with a good dose of IPA, got the capacitor clean to the touch again and even most of the printed labeling survived. I call that a success. I didn't wrap it again because it only carries very low voltages. Mark mentioned that the chopper assembly, the aluminium block on top, is questionable. Since it is the most central component to this design, I carefully desolder it and check the neon tubes. Looks okay visually. Let's connect them up to see if they light up evenly. Hmm, looks plausible. There's a slight flicker to them, but they both seem to be the same brightness. Up next, I check the components on the board. I'm focusing on the resistors and capacitors for now. If the transistors are off, it'll show up later. But if any of the support circuitry is broken, it might kill the active components. Most of the parts are well within spec. Just the 47 ohm resistor for the chopper neons measures at 180 ohms. The resistor is clearly yellow, purple, black. And so this one gets replaced.
I did measure the light depending resistors too. Their resistance went from open lead on my DMM in darkness to 30 kilo ohms when hit by light. Not quite what I expected, but several orders of magnitude difference gives me hope. The PCB still had some residue left in hard to reach places, so I used my usual PCB cleaner to make it shiny. Wiring in the chopper assembly again. The PCB has some interesting point to point wiring in the signal path. The input arrives via the PCB connection and a regular trace and then jumps to a standoff with the two capacitors and the protection diodes. Very strange design indeed. The second PCB is called the calibration board. It carries several trimmers to adjust most of the ranges during calibration. I checked the values after giving it a scrub too, but here all was well. For the first power up with the PCB, I omit the tube again. Better make sure the heater voltage is right and nothing else is shorted before risking that. This is when I found out that it's next to impossible to poke the socket in situ. <coughs> ok, just check the pins and then add the tube anyhow. The first alignment step is the chopper. According to the manual it should oscillate at 85Hz for my 50Hz mains line. I was getting my digital counter ready when I realized I actually have the one that the guide calls for. Sweet! Also, spot on. And since the measurement is taken on the LDR side, I can assume that they are indeed working properly. After that it's pretty much a lot of set input to A, twiddle knob B until meter reads C. During these adjustments I realized that the device is dealing with such small signals that every movement made the needle wobble. So I added the tube shield back again. Now the DC probe has a 1 mega ohm resistor in it, so I did the adjustments with that of course. But like the tube, the line between the resistor and the meter is extremely sensitive to interference. And so, I need to make a probe. 
Good thing I have some copper pipe around from the Heath Kit project. I am pretty much repeating that design. Also nickel plating it again. For some reason the brass doesn't really want to cooperate. It took quite a bit of layering and polishing to get it into a shiny state. The end caps are 3D printed again. Putting it together with the resistor in the middle and the shielding against the spring and case, so there's only a minor gap at the tip. The ohms ranges also work quite well after a minimum of adjustments. Nice! And here's the problem. Adjustment of the AC ranges requires the AC probe. And the miniature RF diode tubes I found are lost in the mail. Ah! Just when I thought it might take forever to get a result, Mark once more came to the rescue. A viewer of his channel had several of these probes around and sent him two. And by the power of postal delivery, one of them ended up here. Complete with an awesome homemade case. Woohoo! First off, how does the probe work? When all the circuitry inside the meter is geared towards DC measurements. So let's explore. There is a diode tube inside the probe with the cathode connected to ground. The anode is connected to the input via a capacitor and to the meter input via a 22 mega ohm resistor and another capacitor to ground. When the input signal goes positive, the capacitor can charge up over the diode, leaving the inner end of it at ground. When the input then goes down again, the capacitor remains charged, cause there is nowhere for the charge to go to, the diode will block any negative voltages. And so after the first charge, the inner end of the capacitor will have a level shifted version of the AC input signal. Negative in this case. The RC combination on the other side will convert that into a DC signal for the meter. So essentially, all the AC happens inside the very tip of the probe. The probe is in very good condition, but I'm a cat. I'm curious by definition, so I'm having a peek inside anyhow. The tip is screwed on with a cap and it looks like there might be missing a spring of sorts. Now I want to double check that. And 
here it is, the mystery tube. Oh, made in Germany. Amperex AE53 apparently. The probe checks out though. The screw on tip does contain the 2600 picofarad capacitor, so there is no continuity into the case even. And all the connectors check out too. So putting it back together and just for completeness, wiping it down with some IPA. Before I plug it in, I'm again making sure that the heater voltage is fine. And here we go! AC probe 0 is almost spot on already, but I adjust it anyhow to rule out any malfunctions. To adjust the reading, the manual says to use a 400Hz signal. I can only use my function generator for that and it goes only up to 13 odd volts. At least that allows me to tune all the ranges. And now the only thing left to do, covering up the carnage. That's it! A nice vintage HP VTVM that is ready for action. Many thanks again to Curious Mark. I hope you enjoyed the project. See you next time! The little cover plate above the meter was scratched up from removed stickers. Period. End of sentence. <laughs>